It wasn't okay. Like, it, okay, what? It wasn't Go. like all the 80s songs uh, were deep for pop music. There was shallow stuff. I'm just saying. But why is Taylor Swift awesome? I just, I'm not saying like awesome. I'm just saying not, oh, you're, not you, bad. You said you were a little of a Swift. A little bit of a Yeah, that's fine. No, As in, it's not fine. There's no, in no uh, universe uh, where a 40 year old dude can admit to being uh, kind of like music. No, like you, you're making it sound. You're making it sound a lot more questionable than it is. Listen, no, I have no. bad taste in music, and I'm fi- like, I listen to ska still, and and I haven't gotten over it. Um, no, it, there, it's, there I'm not are, saying that it's the are, deepest music. I'm there, saying I don't care it's if it's deep. There, no, it's not. It there, is. There are certain demographics uh, for certain music, um, and I'm sorry. That is the cleverest way you've called me a teenage girl in in a while. Uh, <laughs> well, if the, you know, if the uh, if the shoe fits. Thank uh, you. Uh, what about the sweater vest? If the scrunchy, uh, if the scrunchy fits. Uh, uh, what about sweater vests? Of what you do know by looking at me is that I won't be caught dead listening to a Taylor Swift song. Be- yep. <laughs> so, man. It's a good thing that our audience for uh, a youth uh, don't actually listen to us. Because <laughs> we'd be alienated of all right now. We, I'm, I'm, I'm hip with the youth. No. Let's at least talk about Jesus then and give him something. Taylor Swift. Yes, embarrassing. No, let me turn it off my portable heater. It is 42 degrees in April in Denver. I don't like it. <laughs> you were you were uh, officially of the age where, while wearing a sweater vest, you were complaining about the the music that the kids listen to, <laughs> and that it's too cold out. <laughs> How is your knee right now? And I'm does it space hurt? The is your hip one, okay? The left one it does hurt a little bit. I think it's the bar- <laughs> barometric pressure. <laughs> uh. Where do we leave off? Uh, we left uh, off at a weird place. I realized that afterwards. There's just this little thing before it gets into a big thing, right? I think so. So uh, you, I don't know. You said Mark eight twenty two. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you wanna you wanna do twenty two, or you just wanna hop to to twenty seven? Uh, no, twenty two is interesting. All right. I if I remember, I don't know. Okay. I forgot to look it up this week. So let's. <laughs> Let's see how good this goes. And uh, beginning at verse 22, they came to Bethsaida and some people brought to him, being Jesus, a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, but they look like trees walking. And then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes and his sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. This is the word of the Lord. You got a nice floppy Bible there. It's the, yeah, it's the right amount of heft. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. You could be in front of a podium preaching. It's nice. You're so good for my my self image. <laughs> Never actually had a man in a sweater vest make me feel bad about myself, but this sweater vest also it's Argyle. Yeah, we're, we're both going for the British look. You're trying to act like you're in some. Little... We should we should just full on go Sherlock Holmes and not make any comments about it next time. Right, we should we should. Okay, okay. All so, right, so so make you... comments about this instead. Um, uh, I don't have a lot about this, although it's interesting that it's, well, let me ask you this. Uh, why doesn't Jesus miracle work the first time? Was there still spit in his eye? Like that's actually the first thing I thought when I read it. And like the second time, like it was cause he could see, but it was just sort of blurry. No, I don't think that's it. Like, this, I don't know. This seems weird. It seems, it seems like there's it, it, a- the whole thing is weird. There's a this is a miracle in two parts, um, and and I don't know. I mean, I I listen. I'm not a, a first century um, a historian and an expert on on these things. I, I in commentaries I've heard that there was a, a kind of a, an understanding that within 
uh, uh, spittle held medicinal whatever. I don't know. Isn't that why your I don't want to. Is that why your mom always like? Oh, I see that that stuff makes me uncomfortable. Right. Well, I don't want to go down there either. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, yes, maybe that's it. Perhaps when Jesus does that, I guess my thing is when we hear that Jesus does this, we're like, whoa, that's crazy. And I'm curious if first century uh, individuals hearing this would have been like, it's not that, that crazy. That there's spit or that it takes two parts. Because that there's spit, I think that there's, there's actually some fun. Yeah. That I like, Mark, because it, it's it's that sort of incarnate gospel. It's 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 gritty right. um a, a little bit. And like none of the other evangelists speak this way when they describe the healing miracles. I'm okay with with Mark sort of approaching it this way and recognizing like something something uncomfortable is happening here when god heals people he doesn't just zap people out of the sky first god works through means but but second god actually works through his creation so so god became man to to save you from your sins god became a part the creator became a part of the created in order to redeem you through it um the the spit inside of the the restoration of sight uh we could we could stretch it and maybe get to some baptismal language here and see the water that that's sort of tied to the word of god that affects a healing but but also just sort of Miracles are uncomfortable things because they have a cost. Miracles are uncomfortable things because they they, they carry a debt. They're the undoing of sin that, that God had to become man for. And when we get the idea that a miracle is just sort of something that God could zap down from heaven any old time he wants to with no sort of cause or effect in the world, first it makes God seem farther away because, well, heaven is far and I can't reach to it. But also if he could just zap things, why didn't he do it more often? But, but more than that, then it makes the cross seem kind of superfluous to the stuff that I really want, which is just to not hurt in this world. And, and sort of in all of this, you have a God who sort of connects every single one of those dots by diving into creation to bear the muck, the mire, the mud, and, and, and spit to heal, to, to connect himself to the creation in which he is actively redeeming you. And it, and it happens throughout time and space. That means it's not just sort of zapped once, but every single day old Adam is drowned and dies. And every single day new man arises, emerges and arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Every single day you are being saved and you are saved now. But every single day God is still at work to, to continue this process until at last you reach the resurrection of body and life everlasting. I don't know. Is that weird to you? That was a lot. That was a lot. You <laughs> rambled. You got on some sort of anxiety horse and just rode like the Kentucky what, Derby. My what goodness. would my anxiety horse be named? <laughs> Steve? Oh. <laughs> Pickles. 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 I like it. All right. Pickles, Pickles the, the anxiety horse. All right. Um, no, I, listen, I like everything you said there. I think I think that's all good. Um and I think it does kind of make sense about the tangibleness and the touchiness of, of the gospel that, that we have here. And sometimes it, it, it it's just uncomfortable, uh, like the gospel sometimes is. And the fact that Jesus does these sorts of miracles in, in ways that it makes him actually, uh, you know, get into the, like you said, the muck and the mire. I think that it makes perfect sense. He doesn't stay above the fray. Um, hmm. So, uh but what can we say anything? I mean, I, I don't know if we could say anything definitively, but what about the two part miracle? Like the first part didn't take. Did Jesus like mess up? Did he what what is what's going on here? What if we talked about it in terms of a now and not yet? And I'm just I'm testing the theory with you. I, I'm not saying I know, but like in in the same way, like you are saved now, but you're not in the resurrection yet. It's not like a two part miracle, but it is a miracle that doesn't sort of play it out, play itself out instantaneously in the same way of your salvation. Well, I, I guess I could go with that. Um, yeah. You, you got something else? Um, I, I think uh, along the same lines, and maybe this is, maybe this is showing, I don't know. Um, you, we're going to see right after this, um, Peter um, confessing correctly yeah. and incorrectly all at the yeah. same time. He's doing his best. Um, right. Um, He's got on his anxiety horse. For <laughs> so um, I don't know. Maybe it has something kind of along the lines <laughs> of that. Where uh, uh, before uh, before the, the cross and the resurrection, um, uh, things aren't going to be so cut and dry and so simple for people to see. Um, and, and maybe this miracle is is kind of uh foreshadowing some of that too i don't know or or that i don't know your thing sounded good 
<laughs> I guess. Or maybe the, or maybe both of them are wrong. I don't know. There's there's one thing I have a question with you for you about. Um, do not even enter the village. Like Jesus has said, don't tell anyone about this before. But like, don't even enter the village. So, what do you think about this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I honestly, be the one to ask you then because I don't right. either. Well, I was going to ask you how like the dude knew it looked. They looked like trees walking. Well, how would he know what trees like? That's a best guess to somebody who is blind. I mean, unless he was he wasn't born blind, it doesn't say that he was born blind, right? No. <laughs> oh, are we back? We're we yeah. I, well, I've never left. You you just dipped <laughs> out I for just, a second. Okay, that's not good. Uh, hopefully, this keeps going. It, uh, yeah, it says it's going. So I'm gonna just assume that you gave like the most compelling short answer while you were gone. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Because I did. It was awesome. It was amazing. Okay. I don't know. Are they like Ents, right? From Lord of the Rings? From Lord of the is, Rings. Is that what he sees? Is he seeing tree beard? I think that means that like it's blurry and, and just sort of because like trees have leaves around them. You know, like you, you can't see where something necessarily starts and stops. There's not a lot of definition. Maybe he said spit in his eye. Maybe. Maybe I'm just going to ask this guy when I get to heaven. Looking forward to it. Let's do the the fun part. Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. And uh, Jesus, being he, went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. This is the word of the Lord. Do you want to do the yeah. next one too? <clears throat> What's that? Do you want to do like the the oopsie part next then? Or? No, no, no. I think I think okay. we hit this and then we and then we get through nine uh, verse one and then we call it good. I like it. <clears throat> so yeah, no. Uh, this is this is interesting. Um, I mean, we get to hear this. I think Matthew and Luke say this too, and and it kind of give us uh, uh, all of of what we get to hear in in, in Mark, which is good. But <clears throat> why do you think he's asking? Who who do you think people say that I am? I mean, obviously he knows, or maybe he does in, in his in his humanity when he's putting putting aside the the uh, omniscientness of the divine. Um, <clears throat> but he, uh, even if that's the case, he certainly heard whisperings and rumors and, and and all of this sort of stuff. So why why ask the apostles this question? <clears throat> Well, it's, it, I gotta say that it's for their well-being and not for for his, because he, you're right. He he knows. Um, he, like he perceives everyone's thoughts as he's you know healing people. Um, so so he knows what they're saying. But I think it matters what kind of Jesus you believe in, and I think that's worth pressing on, not just for the disciples, but also for, for you and me, because everybody. It's it's easy to sort of say I love Jesus, but then when you ask somebody what your Jesus is what your Jesus believes and does, you actually end up with some pretty different answers. Who do people say that I am is still actually being asked a lot about the Christ. And it, it's still one of those things that gets a lot of answers. Uh, we're, we're uh, as we record this in an election year, and every single time there's an election year, there, there is, uh, oddly enough, both sides co-opting the, the at least portions of new, the New Testament to say why the other side is wrong. Um, and maybe this isn't actually a political weapon in, at all. Uh, some are saying, you know, John the Baptist, some are saying Elijah come again, who's going to to bring about a, a, a new and better political real, reality. And, and, and some are saying other things. But Peter actually, he sees the, the truth here. You are the Christ. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, it's, it's interesting that, uh, what is it? It's all three, right? Um, all three are, are speaking of prophetic figures. Right. Right. Um, so so they got that right. I mean, Jesus is prophet, prophet, priest, and king. So he is he is propheted in that in that regard. He's the, the last and final prophet speaking of himself. Um uh, but they got that that much right. Um but they are still a little bit confused. Uh sure. they're not exactly sure. Uh, exactly what's going to happen. Uh, John the Baptist come back from the dead. I could see how people could want that. Elijah, there is, uh, uh, there, there was this understanding that he was going to come back at the end. Mm -hmm. Although Jesus kind of says, "Well, hey, he kind of did." All right, John, uh, John the Baptist was uh, was the second Elijah, and, and he came and did his job. Um, mm -hmm. Except you, you, you kind of misunderstood on the timeline. Uh, where that was appropriate, it wasn't at the end end, but it was at 
right before I came to, to make straight my paths. <clears throat> so John the Baptist and, and Elijah coming back again, is that's already happened. Um, and then one of the prophets that kind of seems like a catch all. Uh, yeah, unless it's anyone. It, yeah, unless it's unless I think one of the other uh, gospel writers kind of kind of speak about it as the prophet. Yeah, um, uh, and that may be true. Um, none of them, interestingly, none of them talk about how um, uh, 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 Moses that promise for Moses, right? Like, uh, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but uh, um, uh, one will be raised up from among you, right, to take mm-hmm. my place, right. uh, which which uh, is is certainly Jesus. Um, but nonetheless, this is what you've got everybody uh, kind of misunderstanding. Um, but they're given some good guesses. Um, and then they then they go to, then Jesus says, uh, uh, but who do you say that I, that I am? Uh, plural you there, right? Our, our English doesn't say that, but the Greek does, right? So it's not that Jesus is just asking Peter. Signaling Peter out. Right, but Peter is is as usual uh, the the spokesperson, right? And so Jesus is asking the disciples, and the disciples answer, and Peter answers for them. So this is a kind of a, um, I would say, uh, kind of a, a apostle uh, universal understanding, right? They they've gotten past. No, he's not John the Baptist. Come back from the dead, because uh, we saw John the Baptist and Jesus at the same time, uh, and he's not Elijah. He's more than that. Uh, so yeah, so this is, and, and he's shown himself through his miracles, mm-hmm. um, and the way that he, he's cast out demons and stuff, um, he's shown himself to, to, to probably be the, the one, right? The Christ. Um, so that, that's, that's who Jesus, uh, or Peter says. And it's really interesting because everybody wants to like say, uh, hip, hip, hooray, Peter, you got it right. Uh, well done, Peter. Um, and yet, I think if he really would have gotten it right, um, verse 30 would have been different. Really? I think so. I Keep absolutely going. think so. Okay, because, I want to hear it. Because he has the right, he has the right words yeah. um, and uh, the wrong definition. It's the, same, it's the same way that if you went up to a Mormon and you said, uh, "Do you believe in Jesus?" And they sure. say, uh, "Yes, absolutely." Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no Lutheran pastor would be like, "Hey, do me a favor, go tell people about Jesus." Right? We'd be like, "Oh, good. All right, go home, lock the doors. Don't say a word to anybody. Right? Keep keep your Jesus to yourself, please." Right? And I think I think this is exactly what Jesus is doing. Like you said, he knows the hearts and minds of people. Peter said the right word. He said the right term, and in other gospel writer uh, uh, gospel writers, uh, you Even get include the Son of the Living God, yeah, right, and you get Jesus uh, kind of commending him, sure. saying, "Yes, right, uh, uh, blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, right? This has not been given to you by man, but it's been given to you by the, the by God Himself, the Father. Um, so, good job, you you do have this right, and then but then immediately, uh, you've got you've got this next section, so." Mark okay. kind of just condenses it. He's trying to keep it very succinct for a very specific reason. Um, and and so here we've got, you're the Christ. Uh, don't tell anybody I'm the Christ. You're going to mess it up. Please don't. See, I, I, I was with you because I, I know somebody's going to mess it up, which is which is why. And I'm I, I'm willing to, to sort of hear that. The other people that, that could have would just be that anybody hearing it, hearing the Christ, isn't ready to hear that he's he's the christ who dies and rises again for for the salvation of the world but but rather he is the christ who rides into jerusalem to to drive out the the occupying government to to set up on earth a kingdom in which everybody will get their way even though they all disagree with each other right right and and this is like the last time minus the the transfiguration because they don't have right. a clue what the transfiguration means uh <laughs> i think this is the last time that jesus uh uh, uh tells people to stay silent sure okay and I think it's because uh, in in the the next couple of sections, um, uh, or the the next section that we're going to read here, um, uh, Jesus makes it clear what the definition of the Christ actually is, hmm. and that's the one uh, that he wants told. Right. Right. He well, well, not <clears throat> not even just told uh, ahead of time, but like the, the the death is not actually proclaimed publicly outside of the the preachers themselves until the resurrection can be proclaimed along with it and, and that's that's sort of an important thing that how do you mean well the the death of jesus is is not actually 
important at all if he doesn't rise from the dead. Okay. Um, that, that the death and resurrection of Jesus are not sort of two separate things, but this is one passion, one thing that, that happens. And it, it's, it's sort of one thing to sort of say that the, the Christ will be killed. Uh, but, but it's, it's the public proclamation that, that also attests to the resurrection that happened in historical time and space on which our faith stands. Like, this is not just sort of like, will you believe that he has the power to do it? You know, I, I, I believe. And so we, we can sort of, uh, we, we can, we can actualize this vision that we have if we all just sort of cheer jesus on he'll come back from the tomb um but but rather our faith is founded on a historical fact and the public preaching of it is actually rooted in time and space and not people's ability to conceptualize it or, or even believe in something that hasn't happened yet here but that the public preaching of, of the death and resurrection of jesus in the new testament because in the old testament the, the resurrection is foretold all over the place I'm, I'm totally with you and even before this in the new testament the resurrection is 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 there but the the clear go out and tell everyone i'm going to die and then three days later rise from the dead doesn't actually happen until after the the three days from and then the horizon. Um, Am I wrong? I could be wrong. Well, I, I probably explicitly, I think you're right. I mean, because this is at least from from Mark's point of view, I think this is the first. Uh, this is the first uh, um, passion uh, narrative uh, that we get, um, where where Jesus is very explicit about it. Although, um, for those who have ears to hear, it's it's it's, it's still everywhere. it's still written all over yeah, the, the New everywhere. Testament. It's written. It is. His uh, conception, his birth, is is everything um, that that we get. Um, but that's that's I think the whole point. Uh, and maybe we could uh, uh, I'll stop rambling. You could read through through the rest of this. But um, maybe that's the whole point with what Jesus is doing here. Um, sure. That that uh, yeah, you got the you got the word right. Uh, you get the definition wrong. Yeah. So, so let's talk about it. Um, so, and he being Jesus began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. And he said this plainly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but forfeit his soul? For what can a man gain, give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, will the son of man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels and he said to them truly i say to you there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of god after it has come with power this is the word of the lord this be to god there's a lot okay. that happens here yeah and, and it's all connected too. like this is three different sermon texts in uh the way the lectionary is typically divided up but this is all one thing is it three different texts? it's at least two yeah maybe i don't know I guess the deny is is one. Uh, will die and, and get behind me, Satan is one. And take up your cross is another. Um, and and this is one sort of event. Yeah, and that does this uh, that one the thirty four through the rest does give a license for you to sing your favorite hymn, "Onward, Christian Soldiers." I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. So, but but like, take up your cross and follow me. <laughs> It, it's connected to then the, like you can't just sort of say and sometimes you'll get parking tickets <laughs> you're right right no let's get into that because i made light of uh, of it and of you uh, and i regret making light of it um but not of me mm, right? well, yeah um so uh <laughs> 31 through 33 um is uh uh yeah okay so this is jesus finally actually saying uh, for the very first time, this is, very this is how the faith works. Yeah, this is this is who I am, Peter. Uh, you said the right word, um, but I'm not going to let you say the right definition. I'm going to give you the definition of what the Christ be, um, right. and in the other gospels, the Son of the Living God, and all of this sort of stuff. I'm going to give you what that actually means, and you guys are going to. Uh, uh, this is what you're going to tell people. Nobody else. Nobody. Else. What is Warren Craft like? Why, why is he trying to FaceTime audio be? That might be a mistake. Might that be. was a that was a pretty good name drop if it didn't happen though. <laughs> that's, an, that's an old person thing. It's happening right there. He's trying to FaceTime audio me. 
Ugh. Later. Crap. Okay. So, since he was one of the people that helped teach us this anyway, uh, <laughs> what, what, what would what would Graf say? What would Graf say about this? Um, it would be something very gospel-y. Um, well, hold on. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, obviously, it's uh, after he, he's going to be killed. After three days, he's going to be risen. And, and, and Peter here... I, I love the he takes issue with it. He does. I love the the audacity of Peter because it, I know that I'm just like that, right? Um, this is the guy who gets out of the boat when he never should have. This is the guy who just does all of these things when when it's just clear that he shouldn't have. And, and it's very easy for us two thousand years afterwards to point fingers and say, "Dumb, dumb Peter." Except, sure. except that I do just as many dumb things. <clears throat> And this is, I get it. So if my definition of Christ is going to be some sort of uh, messianic figure that is purely temporal and is going to kick out the Romans and reestablish uh, and kind of fix the things within the Sanhedrin and reestablish this this good reign like King David did and King Solomon. King Solomon, that was the peaceful one, right? If, mm-hmm. if, if, uh, if that's my Messiah and then Jesus saying, um, yeah, but I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer a lot. Like once he said, I'm going to suffer many things and I'm going to die. I don't even hear the resurrection thing. Sure. I'm like, no, 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 no. That yeah, can't happen. Enough. That can't mm-hmm. happen. And my curiosity is if Peter is taking, taking Jesus aside and, and rebuking him in such a way of saying, um, cause, cause Jesus is explaining, no, this is it. Yeah. And I'm curious if Peter is thinking, oh, Jesus, Jesus is worried that this is going to happen. Or this is the path that Jesus wants to take, okay. but a different path can be taken if he just understands it better. And that's the rebuking thing, right? It's like, no, 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 no. you don't have to do this. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. But see, he also regards all of the disciples as if like everybody here is thinking the same thing, mm-hmm. but only Peter is the the fool. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. John the Baptist is FaceTime audioing me right now. I'm just also important. Elijah um, come back from the dead, huh? I guess. Um, <laughs> still up to stuff. No, um, I, I think that uh that, that this really actually is a a believer who wants a different kind of God. And and again, this is a place where I, I can resonate because I'm pretty sure God is doing his job wrong most of the time. I don't get my way too. Um, and here you have all of the disciples struggling with this, but Peter being the one to say it, I, I, I don't know how sort of like gentle Peter is being, but, but rather saying like, let's, let's actually come up with a plan B. Let, right. Let's, I don't, I don't want this. You, right. you don't want this. Nobody well, wants this. He is, yeah, you're right. Uh, and I was just kind of speaking off the cuff there, but he is rebuking Jesus, right? Like, this is a, you are wrong, yeah. Jesus. Right. Like, that's not how this should go down. I hear you, but right. nah. Nah, there, there's, a better, there's a better way than this. And you're right. Jesus looking at the apostles, at the other disciples, I, I think this doesn't speak like, uh, oh, I got to see, did they hear what Peter said there? Um, but no, I think it's like, yeah, you guys, you're all in right. league with this. Okay. Right. Get behind me, Satan. Cause, because earlier he's saying you are the Christ. Um, as the mouthpiece of the of the other ones, so they all right. think he's the Christ, but they all have the wrong definition of what Christ is. Right, yeah. but I mean, then then you sort of have these two sort of uh, th- these two sort of goals: one the way of the cross, and one the way of glory. Uh, and here we can actually talk about take up your cross and follow me. Then, because there's not like you all have your own individual crosses. I I, I hate that expression because it, it belittles the Christs. I understand that as a Christian, you will suffer in this world. And that's, I don't want to say that's your cross to bear because when we talk about it, we always talk about it differently than Jesus does. See, he bears the cross for you, not just because life is hard. Whenever we talk about our crosses to bear, it's never actually sacrificial for somebody else. It's just like, well, yep, I guess I've got gout and that's just your, your cross to bear. Who are you? Who do you have gout for? Like you're just sort of saying I have to suffer and I don't like it, but, but rather when Christ suffered on the cross, it was, it was actually not for him. It was for you. It it was explicit with a, a, a outward driven focus. And whenever we talk about taking up our cross and following Jesus, it's always the most selfish, just you have to endure hurt and you don't like it kind of expression. And, and that's where I don't want to talk about it. That that's where it goes astray. Well, I, no, I completely agree with you. Like uh, I got a speeding ticket and it's not fair because everybody speeds on this street. And why was it me? Oh, my cross oh so heavy i i agree with you in, in regards to that and even the gout and even it, it we're, we're doing tongue-in-cheek but even uh 
you know, I got a heart attack, right? Or whatever, right? Actually, yeah, push it all the way to St. Peter, who was actually crucified upside down. I still, his cross didn't save me. That That's not the cross that, that he has to carry. Okay, so what is the cross that he has to carry? Christ's. Like, the, you are either going to chase a religion of glory or a religion of the cross. So what is that? So what does that look like then? I guess that's right. my thing. When he says, take up your cross and follow yes. me, what does that look like? This. It, it means clinging to a, a, the, the God who dies and rises again instead of the God who gives you what you want if you pray hard enough um, or, or trade enough for it or, or suffer enough to earn it. Uh, and, and all the things that, that we would measure in sort of a theology of glory, we are always setting our minds on something that is not a Jesus who dies on the cross for sinners, uh, but, but rather a how do I get what I actually want kind of religion. So that, okay, that's not, I'm just going to push uh, and let you uh, get enough rope um, for yourself here. Because um, <laughs> that's not the traditional way of looking at it. And I'm not even talking about like the traditional way that we think of uh, going back to the gouts things. But like, even if you read a lot of commentaries, the traditional way of, of doing it would be uh, Peter ending up on a, uh, uh, being crucified upside down, i.e. He did it. <clears throat> No, 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 no. Yeah, but, the madman actually did it. He listened to Jesus and said, fine, I'll absolutely take up my cross upside no, down. But but in, in such a way of, uh, no, if uh, if you're going to follow me, like there there will be suffering that comes 100%. with it. Suffering on behalf of the cross. So apostles, very specifically, like when, when, when I go out and give you this commission to go and preach Christ crucified and, and, and raised from the dead, um, there will be persecution, and right. and and a uh, uh, a servant isn't above his master. What happened to me? Expect that to happen to you. They're totally they're gonna, okay with all of that. They're going to throw some rocks at your head, Stephen, and it's going to hurt. Um, could that be? I mean, this persecution for the sake of the cross. Could that be? So persecution <clears throat> for the sake of the gospel. I, gospel. I, I can. Yeah, I, I, I can get down with. Well, yeah, it, it is when it's for you. Right. Um, like without those words, it's, it's not actually the gospel. Right. It's not. Uh, that, that Jesus died doesn't help you. That Jesus died for you is everything. Um, and, and so you, you're right. To, to be near a, a God whose symbol is the cross, to, to have a religion where the symbol is suffering, you're right. There's going to be suffering in this world. Yours is a God who works through suffering, so expect to suffer. If you think you can be a Christian with no suffering, you're, you're going to have a, a real bad time. But when we talk about take up your cross and follow me, um, I, I actually want this to be centered inside of vocation and not inside of and measured inside of pain. Because the, the thing that actually marked Peter uh, in his ministry as special, Stephen in his ministry as, 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 as special, isn't that they were martyred, but rather that they preached the gospel to sinners. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, in the same way that the early <clears throat> church actually sought out martyrdom because they thought this was the holier way to die. Uh, that's not you're doing that wrong too, because the the cross is not simply look at how bad Jesus can have it. Can you can you get into that ballpark? But but rather, when Jesus died, why did he do it? Who was it for? How is that that given? And that is the the part of the religion that that you are called to suffer for. Right. And and there there's a very different thing. And and so I can get down with the, the commentaries that, that speak this way, with the church fathers that speak this way. But what I cannot get down with is the way that it tends to be expressed by Christians who have read them or heard those sermons and then sort of speak about any sort of painful situation in their life as taking up their cross. Because a cross is for your for the world, for your neighbor. It, it's, it's not a selfish thing. It's not just something that gets thrust upon you, but it's rather something you willingly sacrifice for the good of your neighbor. Sure. No. Uh, oh, yep. Good. I like it. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, just quasi heretical, not, not <laughs> heretical. Not, not that's, for, that's the outside of Christendom one. You know that, right? Oh, wait, shoot. Uh, no. <laughs> Heterodox. <laughs> <laughs> no, I listen. I, everything you said, I, I, I like. I, I, I'm just giving you a, a, a little bit of ribbon because. That isn't what you normally will hear. You will hear, I and again, I'm not putting the the, the gout thing in here. I'm, I'm putting in the um, I, I I'm bearing my cross. I'm a Christian, and I got made fun of at school because I'm a Christian, and that's part of the cross that I have to bear. I mean, are you denying that? Well, it it, it depends. I think uh, in a lot of ways 
how you're receiving that. Is it, it that the problem is your neighbor who made fun of you or that you were bearing it for the sake of your neighbor who made fun of you? Because when we hung Jesus on the cross by our sins, he did not see us as the problem that had to be endured, but rather the people that had to be died for to save. Right. No, the, I, again, like, the, no I like that. I'm, I'm being ridiculed uh, uh, by the very people uh, who um, I should be proclaiming Jesus to. And so to take up your cross then, and, and again, it's so easy to make this a glory thing. So, you know, how can I, how can I witness to them extra hard now so that I will really be taken or simply recognize that in this religion, the one thing you want to carry all the way through is the cross of Christ. And, and, and yeah, sometimes that's going to hurt, but that is for you. And that is for your neighbor. And to, to carry that is the thing that actually lets you actually deal with the, the last verse that we read to, to, uh, to see the kingdom of God showing up with power that 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 doesn't happen in the the last great day it does but that happens when the sun breathes his last and gives up his spirit and the redemption of the world is 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 secured that happens as christ bursts from the tomb proclaiming even to people who who do not perceive or understand or have ears to hear that that uh he, he is risen I, I i think that in inside of this we get to, to have a cross that that actually saves and doesn't just sort of endure because of. Yeah. And, and we'll pick up, I think next time with nine, nine, two, but nine, one as well. Cause that's a confusing one because a lot yeah. of people are like, wait a minute, it, it, it's gotta be the, <laughs> it's gotta be the second false. coming. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, d- yeah. Concordia commentary even puts a, 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 a even a, a, an earlier spin on it and I'll mm-hmm. let it just ruminate there. Um, and again, he, he doesn't definitively say, and I'm not sure if we can 100%, uh, but I, I think the Concordia Commentary leads, leads, uh, leans to um, the very verse after it. Hmm. That's, where, that's where we're seeing this power kind of, uh, uh, because it's, 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 it's power, it's not authority. Right. It's, it's, it, and it's, so it's hmm. power, not weakness. So I'm curious okay. if it's, it, but again, the, the odd thing is, um, at the end of the Transfiguration, uh, we do have him coming down uh, uh, the mount, back down into the muck and the mire, and telling everybody, "Hey, psh, you don't understand this. You don't understand the transfiguration. Don't tell anybody until after death and resurrection." So, there you go. All right, I'm gonna let you go. We are way over time, uh, and I know you've got a boatload of Taylor Swift to listen to. So, I'll just let you do you, buddy. I knew that you were trouble when you walked in. I don't know what that means. You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org/slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman.